Xbox, record this as a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days. If you'd like to find out more, head to xboxrecordthis.com. So, guys, have you seen the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Of course. Yes. Of course, right? Monster. So, you know, I love my wife, but sometimes, you know. Are you sure you want to keep this on the recording? Oh, hello. Daddy Diwali here, and welcome to Xbox Record This Episode 16. We've got an amazing show lined up for you guys. Joining me, as always, is the assistant to the co-host, Mr. Chipotle Bear. Chipotle Bear, how are you, my friend? I am great, man. It's going to be a sweet 16 after all. Uh, it's oh. been a long week. Demoted we're after recording that Recording at a, a new time and day this week because we're getting back into the school year, but I'm super excited. Yesterday, I had a 16-hour day at work. Oh. Oh. I got home at 10.30 from that volleyball game. So excited oh. to be here on Friday evening with you guys. Well, we were going to record last night, you guys, and that wouldn't have happened according to Chapo Bear. We would have never. Sedine, or Bubble Boy has been sleeping for two hours at that point. So, uh, speaking of Bubble Boy, joining us as always, the assistant to the assistant to the co hosts, Bubble Boy and Seven, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I, that's why Chapo gets the big bucks, I guess. Holy cow, right? Yes. Um, he sure my does. hope is that I can continue and this won't be my last episode, but I'm I'm fearing that I'm gonna get voted off oh. after one of our segments tonight. So cross your fingers for me. Okay. Well, you heard it here first, boys. Uh Bubble Boy and Seven in the doghouse. Uh speaking of dog houses, uh before you enter my doghouse, Bubble Boy, can you turn your gain up? about 15 percentage points. And while you're doing that, guys, I would like to give out some special shout outs. We've got a lot and this is exciting. So first shout out, and you'll appreciate this, you guys. Shout out to Mr. Felix Tuesta, a good oh. friend from middle school and high school. I, I think he was middle school. Yep. Felix moved into this street right next to us, right behind us, bought a house, bought one we were actually looking at before we chose to renovate my parents' house. And he has a five-year-old son who's starting at Rooney Ranch, yep. and they were down at the park, and we were catching up. So it's really great to see Felix. Shout out to Felix. I told him about the podcast, of course. He's already <laughs> listened to a few episodes. He says he loved it and that we have great chemistry. So that was exciting to see Mr. Felix Twist, uh, just one of the nicest guys. You guys. Oh, yeah. Just, how cool. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Felix, man. Great to hear that. Yeah. Shout out, Felix. Shout out to Felix. He was just, you know, as kind as always. Good old Felix yeah. Twist, one of my favorites. Oh, um, I made he, my day. That's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So my neighbor, just right behind us, we can go to the park now. He said he wants to shoot some hoops, so that was really exciting. And his son is five. Also a special shout out to Felix. Felix's wife is going through chemo right now, you guys. She has breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So let's send our nice thoughts and prayers out for yep. uh, yeah. his wife. And Absolutely nothing but positive love. energy. So Felix, buddy, thank you for listening. You're always welcome on the show. And if you need anything, you always just hit us up, all right? Next Absolutely. shout out, another elementary slash high school or middle school, high school friend of ours, Mr. Big Al Smith. Oh, <laughs> oh Big Al. <laughs> Love chose, me some Alex Smith. He followed us on Instagram. And you know, I just love uh, speaking of another just amazingly nice and kind soul. Big yeah. Al, thank you so much for the follow. Just a great buddy. human being. Exactly. His wife is awesome too. Beautiful kids. Shout out. Man, I could I, I just Al. had all kinds of memories of the good old days <laughs> flood back in Big Al's unfinished basement. The good old days, yes. That's what we're talking about here. Also, so shout out Big Al Smith. Um still I went to a Nuggets game with him recently, him and Joe Gonzalez. Exactly. Like he doesn't age. Exactly yep. the same. Probably could still dunk on me. <laughs> Another <laughs> shout out to Lauren. Again, of course, Lauren, one of our biggest fans. She wrote a comment on our YouTube. I don't know if you saw that on the last video. She was praising me for my TV picks. And I'm pretty sure she mocked me for something else. But shout out to Lauren. As always, Lauren, shout out, shout out. Jose, give her I think she out. was mocking your face. I think that's what it was. <laughs> I don't think so. And then <laughs> Shout out to our first 23 to 27 year old listener. We finally hit that demographic, right. you guys. All we right. have all ages from 18 to 59 now. We did it. We we got the 
<laughs> well, that's like the TikTok generation. I don't even know what age yeah. that is. Uh, is it TikTok? Though? Yeah, I think I don't I, know about TikTok. Yeah, Maybe no, Snapchat. see, I was watching. I think it's a Snapchat have generation. You, uh, no, I think it's TikTok. Have you guys seen um, All Gas No Breaks or Channel Five News with Andrew Callahan? Hilarious on YouTube. If not, oh my gosh, I'm gonna send it to you right now. Wait, wait, hold he, on. Isn't your little sister in that age range? Uh, no, dude, she's like she's 28 now, man. It's crazy. She's gonna be like <sighs> just yeah. missed it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So uh, anyway, back. Andrew Callahan was on an interview on YouTube. By the way, guys, watch Channel Five News and All Gas No Breaks. That's his old channel, but now he just does Channel Five News. I'm going to send you the links. Don't worry about it. He was talking about this in the interview. He was saying 27 is the cutoff. And I believe Andrew. He's like this really smart younger guy. He's thinking he's 24. So he's like TikTok. So we're way past that, as you know. So I have no idea what's going on with TikTok. Actually, I think Chan, no, Jay Bizzle tried to do some TikTok. So we'll talk about that another time. And then finally, our final shout out. Shout out to us, boys. We have reached over Xbox 360 plays. So Ooh. congratulations, Ooh. Good job, boys. us. Good job, team. Uh, I was I was listening to this week's episode on God on the way to work on Wednesday probably and I was just cracking myself up. <laughs> I just loved it. I had such a good time and I I, I it was funny because at one point Shannon was driving behind me and I didn't know it for quite a while. Like, what are you so I'm sure at? she yeah I'm sure she was just like, what in the heck is he listening to? <laughs> well, we got to get her to listen to the show. She, oh, she does. She and I guess uh, shout out to Ethan and Isaac because they're coming in. Isaac hasn't turned 18 yet but he'll be as All soon right. as he does yeah but he's like a that. serious playstation gamer but we'll forgive him we'll forgive him and he said he was like i don't have a mic but i want to be on and i think <laughs> we i was like well you know uh, let's get in on that while he's free and doesn't cost us like eight million dollars because he'll be there the next go. uh big time mlb star but all right so shout out to the walksmans as well appreciate that so uh as always, guys, thank you for all the listens. I think we're averaging around, if I did the math right, around like 25 an episode. That's pretty good considering it's just us three and then none of our friends listening. Maybe Rock Quarry, <laughs> maybe Mikey. Yep. That's about it. So somebody's listening. So thank you, guys. Please write in. You can always reach us at Xbox. Record this on everything. Exciting warm-up reader mail. Let's jump into it, you guys. This comes from Jay Bizzle. One of our biggest fans speak. Okay, there's another one who listens to the show. He, he's, he's a devout fan of the show. Jay Bizzle writes in and says, Hey, XRT, quick question for you. What are your top five fast food chicken sandwiches? Mine is the spicy chicken sandwich from Popeye's. Man, what a sandwich. I have infinite access to North Carolina barbecue out here, but I go to Popeye's instead like three times a week. Love you guys. So... Gentlemen, That's why we love wants... Jay Bizzle right there. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, and he will, ne and he'll never gain a pound yes. either. From That's all the worst. That. That's the uh, yeah. I Guys, Jay Biz is one of our good friends, and seriously, a buck thirty soaking wet. Like, <laughs> not I'm not exaggerating. And he's like <laughs> seven six too. And he's he like forty something. Like no one's business. Yeah, just so you know. What did you say? Dance like a jigglyfish making a move. Dance like a something? jellyfish. Rhythm <laughs> don't mean nothing. He's just Rhythm out there. Don't mean so shout out to Jay Bizzle. Um, who wants to give their chicken list first? Oh, I do. So that All I can right. hurry up and get kicked off the show. Cause this okay, is, here we go. This is it. Um, I, I think my list is only three sandwiches long. You have to have pie. And I know this guy from the party. Yeah, somebody boot this. I'm sick of these. I'm Last sorry. week you gave me a five A and five B. Now you're telling me you only have three. Whatever. What Let's go. To Get this do? over. I with. haven't eaten. Okay, and two of them are from McDonald's. <laughs> okay, so I have the, go. the the new you know McDonald's answer to the chicken wars stuff. It's it's crappy. I don't love it. The it's it's nothing to write home about. And then coming in at a solid second place is the good old spicy McChicken. Um, the dollar value menu from McDonald's, that one oldie, but goodie. Um, and for you, for the value, right? Like it's, it's got a, that has to be on there. And then number one, Chick-fil-A, because I still to this day have not, I know, I know, have not had a Popeye's yet. Um, All right. So there's bubble so. boys list bubble boy. Why don't you put your gain up another 10% there while I mute you again? Cause that was a pathetic list. Jose, come on, give me something better here. Let's go. I got, I have my top five plus an honorable mention. I was ready to go. I was discussing this with good old Zach Morris at basketball last night. It was a heated discussion. It was great. Um, so my number five is the Shout Wendy's home Morris. style chicken sandwich. 
Uh, it's actually it's solid. I mean, I don't love it. It's just honestly I, that my I knew the top four right away, and then I had to think about number five, and it just slid in there. Right, it got lucky basically. Uh, number four is the actually believe it or not the new KFC chicken sandwich. It's actually incredibly good. And as much as I know, obviously you associate chicken with KFC. I just wouldn't have associated their sandwiches, but I will give them credit where credit is due. It's actually very good. I actually had it yesterday, so actually it was good timing. Um, number three is Chick-fil-A, uh, and I, I do really love Chick-fil-A. I'm, my daughters love it. We eat it probably way more than we should. Um, and, and to be fair, you know, just a quick aside about this, you know, trying to keep a lot of other, there are other factors that play into this. I was truly ranking this based on what I've actually eaten and the actual tastiness of the food, because I know there are some other pieces of that depending on who you are. Uh, my number two is the spicy McChicken at McDonald's because one, it is always satisfying, delicious, and it is a buck, dude. It is a buck. Like literally, none of these come close to that. And so when you you have to incorporate that into this piece as well. So that's number two. And then my number one is that good old Popeye's chicken sandwich. And I just, here's the thing. I haven't had the spicy one because there's no Popeye's within freaking 20 miles of us here in Lakewood. And so... It's on my list to do. We're getting a Popeye's at Jewel and Wadsworth. It can't come fast enough. I will absolutely get it the next time I go, D. Wally. But I haven't had it, so I couldn't throw it on there. So number one, Popeye's chicken sandwich. And then my honorable mention, speaking of the childhood, is the cafeteria chicken sandwich at Foothills Elementary when we were kids. Because I love chicken sandwich day. No shame about it. I would go back there in a heartbeat and have That's that. a solid pick. Out in lunch, lady. How many, how many pumps of ranch did you put on it? <laughs> I don't. I don't think I did. I think I, I did ketchup. ketchup. I, I think oh. I did ketchup. Yeah, me too. Man, yeah. Anyway, that's my back. top five. Speaking of the good old days, yeah. Thank you I was Chipotle curious man. if you were going to throw a, a zinger in there for the McSnack wrap because isn't that chicken? Does that no, count? It was, no, it was we a Big Mac. It was a Big Mac in there. Yeah, I, I thought about oh, that. God, with, what did I? I thought about the um, actually. What was the? What was the? What were the Taco Bell like cheap little burritos? They got rid of them recently. There were three of them. It was like the, yeah, the nacho the, one, the gr- loaded griller. It was a chicken one. Yeah. It was solid. Yeah, that's and I not was really like, that, not a sandwich. I was trying that's to, you semantics. know, like we're really we're yeah. focusing on sandwiches here. So that's yeah, what I, I agree. Want. All right, D. Wally, what do you say? I, I really appreciate your list. Mine actually has similar picks here. So again, I like your honorable mention. Shout out to the cafeteria chicken sandwich. I completely agree. Also, shout out to the McDonald's uh, spicy McChicken. You're right. That is a great sandwich, and I love it. But it didn't make the cut. And I love the value of it, but here is my new. This is the definitive top five chicken sandwich of all time. This is this is the list, you guys. You will agree after you have these. Number five, if you haven't had it, go try it. The Burger King spicy chicken sandwich. Just had it the other day. This blows McDonald's out of the water. Solid. This is their best chicken sandwich. Better than you know their long chicken one that Allie loves to get for some reason. That was this disgusting. Way Sorry, Allie. This one. You know I love you. That the long chicken one is disgusting. Oh yeah, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the spicy. Cardboard. Get the spicy. Cardboard and lettuce. <laughs> Jose, go try the spicy chicken at Burger King. Worth your time. It's right up from Bear Creek. Number four, the KFC spicy chicken sandwich that Jose just brought up solid. I just had it today. You guys just had it on the way back home. I was like, I got to do this because I got to make sure my list is complete. Jay Bizzle actually mentioned it earlier today, picked it up before the workout. Number three, and this is tough for me. That was your pre-workout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, dude. And then I had, oh, I'll tell you later. And then number three, Popeye's standard chicken sandwich. Delicious. Jose has that as his number one. It, it can be up there. I'm shocked at when I eat it. I'm like, man, this is just so good without any special sauces. It's the chicken. It's the bun. It's just a little bit of mayonnaise. Oh, my gosh. And number two, out of respect to the old school goat, they used to be, you know, Tom Brady, maybe making way for, I hate to say it, Patrick Mahomes here, Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich with Chick-fil-A sauce. Ooh, that used to call. be. That's a great call. Used to be my number one. But then I started to think about it. I can have the Popeye standard with no sauce, and that gives it a run for its money. What I think makes the Chick-fil-A sandwich for me is the Chick-fil-A sauce. And number one, if you guys haven't had it, go out immediately and get both the standard and then the new number one definitive top chicken sandwich is the Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich, you boys. I had this earlier this week. I got two of them because I was so pumped to have it again. Devoured them both on the way home. That's and I'm also so lucky. Pre workout snack. <laughs> also pre workout. <laughs> Wait, do you, what sauce do you put on the Popeyes? I, I do want to know. Or do it you just comes, do the, the, okay. the mayo that comes on it? No, it comes with a special spicy sauce. Same oh, okay. with the 
KFC and same with the Burger King. And I'm starting to think that maybe they might be getting the same chicken and sauces because they're very similar, but Popeye's is number one, you guys. So there you have it. Number one, Popeye's. Number two, Chick-fil-A. Number three, Popeye's Standard. Number four, Spicy KFC. Number five, Burger King Spicy. Uh, Chance, what would you... What are you curveball. Say? Curveball. I think we all need to meet up at Yard House soon and try the... Uh, listen. Wait, hold I on. I know. You what are you... It. But that's, uh, this is fast food. This is fast food. We're keeping it okay. fast yeah, food. Okay. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. That, uh, we could go to a whole nother dimension right. with the next one. So... Thank you. If you have a favorite chicken sandwich, please write on. Give us your opinions. I know this is going to be a hot one, but everyone who's had the Popeyes knows. Or write Chipotle in Bear. and tell us who you think was the most correct because it's we Diwali. all know it's me. Do you think it's he thinks it's himself? He always does. That's He's correct. like Gaston and Beauty and the Beast. That is correct. But you let us know for real. Uh, I mean, right. it, it is possible I'm right in that chicken. Okay, and nobody nope, You only pick nope. three. Yeah, you only have three. D- disqualify. All right, boys, what have we been playing? Let's get into the video game action. So thank you again, Jay Busy, Jay Busy, Bizzle. Thank you for that amazing warm-up question. Uh, what was what were we going to do next week, you guys? I thought we already penciled it in. Top five. Uh, pizzas. Ooh, so no, yeah. that wasn't it. No, it's, uh, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. We're gonna go. It's oh, not the good oh. old days, but it's the. Was it the top five pizza fast food? Oh, you're right. It's gonna be yeah. top five yeah, yeah. fast food pizza. So our listeners out there, get your list ready and send what's them into us. What's a fast food pizza? So it can't be like <laughs> sit down, like like Fragilios. Like front yeah, room Fragilios. doesn't count because it's not fast food. Yeah, yeah. I would say like if you can go, like you can't go. Well, I guess you can sit at a pizza. You know what? We'll yeah. discuss semantics later. We'll discuss this later, okay. guys. What like Anthony says, Anthony. What, who wants to go first? What have you been playing? Actually, Poe. I want to go to Poe. Poe. I will go first because the answer for this week is actually nothing, unfortunately. <laughs> because we yeah. just had a re- feeling our, after our show just came out on, on Monday. It's Friday, and that, with the first week back, <laughs> it's just I haven't gotten there. It's um, I I really want to start twelve minutes. I didn't originally, but I do really want to now, and I still want to play Hades. Those are my. I, it's going to be one of those yeah. two for my next ones that I'll jump into, and then as yeah. as I can. But that's mine, so I can skip on when you guys are up. Well, and that's an easy segue because that's exactly what I've been playing is Hades in 12 minutes. Um, unfortunately, I was homesick with a kiddo today. Um, but the only plus side of that was I did get to jump on for 12 minutes for a little bit. And as I texted the two of you, it's exactly what I was expecting and hoping for. And I'm going to say nothing else of it um, other than you need to try it. Yeah, I completely agree. I also have been playing um, 12 minutes. Oh, I want to quickly talk about Ascent, Jose. Jose Chance, whenever you want to jump in, I'll jump in with you guys for the Ascent. They did release a recent update, and Neon Giant liked my tweet, so shout out to Neon Giant. Uh, it is. It looks – I noticed it. I'm like, this looks better. So they did something, and I feel like the graphics have improved. And it, I mean, I already thought it was a gorgeous game, but it, it looks sharper, and I feel like I can fe- see a more depth of field out there. They did fix most of the achievements except for one. There's still one – Broken achievement for filling out the codex. So unfortunately, I'm still going to have to wait for that. But uh, I did want to shout out. I, I want to play The Ascent again. So I'll play with you guys whenever. The next one, 12 minutes. Like Chance said, I don't want to give it away. But Chance, I'm stuck. And I need your help. So <laughs> I kind of want to well, talk to you about it. Because no, I feel I like too. I've done I'm... everything. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Like I feel like I have everything I need. And I feel like I know what I need to do next. But I can't figure out the steps to get there. I And I think I know exactly where you are. And I accidentally figured it out. Um, but And then played for another, I don't know, half an hour. And was cruising, mm-hmm. cruising, cruising. And bam, I'm stuck again. So, yeah. But I think I know. I'm well, sure I know exactly where you're we'll at. We'll have to talk about this. Like, yeah. Somehow, yeah. without spoiling it for, we could. Can we you could, stop with the cursing? I said, Gosh. "Well, shoot! It's Friday tonight, so we could <laughs> finish here and go play some ascent." <laughs> we could. Um, so, oh, and the last thing I wanted to mention that I've been playing, guys. This is random. I've been playing Red Dead Redemption backwards compat- compatibility, the Undead Nightmare, and I gotta say that game is upscaled to 4K, so it looks nice and sharp. It does feel a little dated, but as far as the acting and the humor and the characters that I've met so far, amazing. Like it's cracking me up. I just did a hilarious Sasquatch mission. I don't want to spoil that. And just running into randoms, I forget how good Red Dead is at when those random encounters and meeting characters and how humorous the game is. And the whole concept of this is like, um, as John Marston wakes up, 
and basically zombies are like taking over, but it's got this subtle, unique kind of humor where he's just kind of poking fun at everything the whole time. And guys, I can tell you right now, if you haven't played it, I think it'll be worth your time. The biggest thing I'm taking away from it though, is it's making me want to play Red Dead 2. And I love Red Dead 2. And I'm like, I wish there was more. Maybe I should go back and like try to 100% it, which is ridiculous. But I'm thinking about maybe I should try the online because I know there's a lot of uh, quests and stuff you could do there. So shout out to Rockstar Games. You guys are amazing. Uh, Red Dead Undead Nightmare. So any questions or anything else you want to add to that, you guys? I didn't realize it was a campaign DLC. I thought it was like a horde mode kind of thing. No, dude. It's like literally, it's like, it's all, it's a whole big camp, like big campaign, the whole map oh, where yeah, everything's wow. new and it's a whole new story. It's crazy, dude. It, it got so many good reviews. It, chance, it's worth your time, man. So uh, shout out to Red Dead Redemption and you're going to want to play it, Chance, because I know you're a big Red Dead fan. Yeah. And I, 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 God, I think I actually might have it now that you say that and just never actually fired it up. <laughs> Dude, it's worth your time. No, it's not a horde mode. Oh, oh, wait. One big negative, though, I forgot to say. There is a glitch that they still haven't fixed, and I started to read about it in some YouTube comments when I was watching a video for a mission. There some at points about, and it's pretty consistent, too. It's happening to me. About 30 minutes into a session, the zombies will be headless, and then they're just these NPCs just walking around normally, and you can't like continue on and do stuff. So I have to quit out of the game and reload it, and then it goes away. So that's kind of a bummer. It's happened to me at least like five times in the few hours I've played. So that kind of sucks. So that's pretty frequent for a bug. Yeah, especially no, the it's, game's, it's not a new game, dude. It's a very frequent, annoying bug. So unfortunately, maybe, maybe Coral could help you figure out how to kill a, Coral. a zombie. Coral. What would he have to say, Chapo? Uh, he's only got one eye. It's going to be difficult, to be honest. Yeah, and he's, he's a zombie. Actually, he's, did they take him out? I'm pretty sure. Spoilers. I'm pretty sure they took him out, if I remember correctly. Moving on, you guys. Let's move into Xbox news. The first news item I would like to bring up is that Microsoft has announced the plug-in and game on with the new Xbox Xbox stereo headset. So... Basically, you guys, this is the same wireless headset it looks like, only now wired, and I believe it is like, does it even how much it was? It was like forty nine ninety nine or fifty nine ninety nine. I think it might be yeah fifty. That was my question actually. I did I didn't look it up. It's sixty dollars, so this is strictly wired, like what we're wearing right now. Most of us. Do you guys have any thoughts on this? Do you think it's weird that it's sixty and then maybe for what forty bucks more you can go completely wireless? Any thoughts on the completely wired Xbox headset? Yeah, I would say. No, I oh, think, oh yeah. yeah, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Chipo. No, Bubble Boy, you go first. You're good. Uh, I, well, I think it's going to be very similar to yours. I, 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 the we're at a point in our lives where money isn't not that it's not a factor, but it certainly isn't with video games, right? Because they're they're never terribly expensive. Um, but anytime they can broaden the market by making things cheaper, um, I think it's always a good thing. It's not for me, but it's a good thing. Uh, totally agree. Uh, I was going to add a couple other things, though. You know, I, I before my current, I do have the Xbox Series X headset that was that came out, I don't know, a couple months ago and um, love it. I, I think it's a great headset. It's great for gaming. Battery life is exceptional. I actually really like the controls on the headset. Like it's it, it is everything I could want in it. Um, and honestly, the two things that I love that are like intangibles are when I have to pee and when I'm getting a snack, because before when I had a wired headset, it literally didn't bother me one bit to have a wire except those two things, because I had to take my controller with me or take my headset off. And that, sound, and did that you, sounds so silly. And did like you it, get your cord stuck on the handles on your hardware for your cabinets? Because that happened to me all the time you guys and it would piss me <laughs> off so much with that cord that's literally one reason why i still want to get a wireless but i haven't because i it comfort is king for me my somehow my head is more gigantic yeah, than that is too big to fit in those and it's just it's just like this clamping force on me you guys so i'm still waiting so go ahead jose what was your other point Sorry. no that was it i was just gonna say i really liked it the, the one thing that i also thought was really freeing the old headset because i actually had the old xbox headset when it for the xbox one was that it was actually at the bottom of the controller where it plugged in. And when you were trying to rest your controller, like on your lap, it would like mess with that 3.5 millimeter jack. And sometimes you get like audio artifacts and stuff like that. So I really have just like not having that. Um, and it's actually just, I really am great. But to Chance's point, I mean, this doesn't bother me. This is coming out again. It's more access. It's the same great audio quality. 
great for them. Glad to see him doing more stuff like this. So that's kind of just general thoughts. Yeah, and if it has the same, it probably has, I would think it's going to have actually better audio quality because I know when you're wired, it's better than the wireless. There's still yeah, I don't know about quality. It'll have better um, latency for sure. Yeah, you know for sure, better That's... latency. And then a lot of people bring up a good point that I saw in some comments is that just well, I can use this on my Switch. I can use this on my PlayStation. I can plug it into anything, and it looks good. And so. That's a, another great point. So I I currently play with a Philips. Um, I can't remember. I think it's SH nine thousand or something. And I have one of those adapters that puts a mic on it. They're open ended, so you can kind of hear out. So that's the only problem is if I'm gaming next to someone, they'll be able to hear it still. But they are the most comfortable headset I've ever uh, purchased. I want a wireless one, and I want one of those super expensive is that Bang and Olufsen ones. So it's like five hundred dollar ones, but. I'm going to wait until that comes. For me, guys, comfort is king. I love the Xbox ones, but it just, after a few hours, an hour or so, I was it was hurting me. So I have to have something that's comfortable, but I also want really good sound quality. So I'm sticking with the wire for now. But like Jose and Chan said, this is great for people who just want a basic headset that's better than the, remember those cheap $20 or $30 ones mm-hmm. that Xbox had? Those weren't very good. Like this yeah. is a nice, you know, it's 60 bucks, but you're going to get the quality, especially like you saw with the wireless Microsoft one. So. Yeah, but in the market of headsets nowadays, 60 bucks is a steal, dude. Like their headsets are two, three, four hundred dollars wow. easily for like the, the quality Those ones. And, and that's ones. PC ones, too. Um, and just for the audience out there, like I said, I, I have the Xbox ones. Dan has the Philips. Chance, you want to just tell the people what you have? Oh, yeah. Has the I was waiting one. to the uh, Odyssey Penrose X, which are just phenomenal. Um, Those are completely my, wireless. Yeah, and they work flawlessly when it comes to i could even when i had the switch i could go from my switch to my ipad to the xbox to my phone listening to music all just like that um and the price tag um warranted that but my just sheer and utter dominance in fantasy football over the last few years uh paid for those so just for the folks at home actually chapo you helped you helped pay for those in fact you're (laughs) losing ways so i did uh, what, what costs more money, the switch or the headphones? The headphones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, hey, you man. paid for half of yeah. them. So <laughs> I didn't pay for half of them. I, I helped you win half of the money. I didn't pay <laughs> he paid, for it. He paid, he paid for some of it. Next story guys. And this is kind of like a, a combination here. So these are games coming to game pass and these were kind of just, some of them were just dropped randomly. So out now we have humankind need for speed, heat, uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 Jedi Fallen Order. And this was coming from Niall over on Twitter. August 19th, so it was just yesterday, was Recompile Train Sim World 2. 12 minutes came out. Go play 12 minutes. Uh, next week, oh my gosh, I completely forgot. Psychonauts 2. And then this was a random one, you guys. Mist. Mist is coming to Game Pass. Do you guys have any memories of Mist? Oh, and the other one was Quake. Quake was announced. There's Quake 1, 2, and 3 are also coming. I've never played any of the Quake games. So Quake's those are on there now. Okay, so all of them yeah. did come out. Yeah. Yeah. I, any thoughts I, man, on Mist? Mist, I can just remember <laughs> being like, seeing it and, see, gosh, who was, um, LT. Remember LT? Uh, another Green Mountain shout out that he had, um, he would play Mist. And what what was the other PC only game forever that was such a, it was a Valve game. Oh, it came in the orange box. Half-Life. Oh, someone's Team Fortress? Half-Life, yes. Oh, or Half-Life. Half-Life. Okay. Um, those two games, and I can just remember being like, eh? I, I, eh? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I remember Mist. I had it on my, like, my freak PC, the first one I ever got where I played, like, do you remember, guys, that Lego game, that first Lego City game that came out? Oh, my gosh, talk about old. And I just remember thinking, like, man, Mist looks so cool. And I'd get to like the first room and then I have no idea what to do. And that's about all I played. <laughs> Never got further than like the first puzzle. Yeah, like, sounds like Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, pretty much. Except I was just too dumb and like young to be like, to figure it out. Jose, did you ever play Mist or have any memories? I know. I, we were pretty young at that point, to be fair. I mean, I, I mean, I know, I know LT played it too, but, and I mean, arguably smarter than all of us, um, I, I might play it honestly if it came out because I'd like puzzle games, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's one of those where like if it's too much work because it's it's not going to look super great, even though it's probably running smoother and stuff like that. It's it probably, you know, I'm not going to delve too much time, in, but I might I might pick it up if I have some minutes to spare. Yeah. I might love it. Who knows? And it might be one that I should just watch on YouTube realistically. But also yeah. on the Game Pass note here, there are 10 more games coming out with touch controls chance. So you don't even need a controller for these and these might interest you. Hades. 
Blood Roots Farming Simulator 19 going under Need for Speed Heat has touch controls Peggle 2, Psychonauts, Wasteland 2, Wasteland 3, and Wasteland Remastered, all with touch controls. Chance, do you think Wasteland would play well strictly with touch? No, I I don't think hardly anything plays well with touch. Um, okay. But Wasteland Three is is worth your time most I know. certainly. I still it, get and, into it, and it's not terribly long. It's not short, but probably twenty twenty five hours. I did want to touch on two of the other games you mentioned though, um, because I was going um, totally dark on all a lot of these games and not wanting to read a lot. And Psychonauts was not exciting me. I'm pumped now. That'll all I'll, I'll have Dude, that pre downloaded and ready to go. Yeah, I know. I was I trying to all be too cool it. for it, but I will. And then the other one was um recompile. I that one really intrigued me. And Jose, I don't know if you saw it. It all it's it's not like Tron when it comes to the like speeder bikes, but it reminds me of Tron in that like you're this guy running around um inside a computer system. Um and I think it's really short too, so it's another one of those um, just, Hey, why not? It's free and a cool new experience. Nice. I actually like the name of that. That one I was just reading the list. I, I knew nothing about it, but I'm like, that's a cool name. Chance. Speaking of being in a computer, I still think Narita boy is worth your time. If you can figure that out, I'm telling you, I know the seizures, Jose, you too. Um, moving on. And this one, <laughs> sadly, might be, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be super excited for this, but I probably am because I am an elder scrolls simp. Do you guys, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition was announced coming 11-11-2021, 10 years, a decade after the original came out. Wow. So this is coming from Cloberl over on or on Twitter. This just happened the other day. Yeah, added fishing. Shout out to Cloberl. <laughs> so you get a free Xbox Series X and S next-gen upgrade for existing owners of the whatever the special edition is, okay? The Alexa edition, right? Yes, okay. So sorry, the you, special edition it, will receive the next gen update, upgrade, fishing, survival mode and new quest and saints and seducers. But the anniversary edition is a paid version. We will have to buy this, you guys. And this includes three expansions plus the creation club pieces. Guys, what are your thoughts on Skyrim being announced? And released yet again. I like the idea of something happening on the 10 year anniversary, which is, I, I can't believe, I feel like Skyrim just came out not too long. Well, that's because it literally has been coming out over and over. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, what's the over under on seven different iterations? Do you think it's higher or lower? Uh, it's higher. I remember it's seven. Just, it just passed. Uh, someone just did a comparison of another franchise and it somehow just passed it. This is the most remade. Oh, it was Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 has an insane amount of really re- yeah it does have a bunch releases. of remakes yeah and then this just passed it with this release so I'm gonna I'm gonna admit it right here you guys on XRT 16 right now I purchased Skyrim on the 360 on my Switch on my Xbox Series or on my Xbox One X and I also bought it for the PS4 but I never got to it and now. I will probably buy it for my Xbox Series X. Pathetic. And jokes on you, Pony Boy probably got it for you for Christmas as well. <laughs> Do you got what are your guys' thoughts on this? Jose, what well, do you think? What was your game? review of the Alexa version? How can Never you play that one? Well, oh my God. I said like one thing to her and then I was like over it. But guys, <laughs> what are your thoughts on Skyrim being announced yet again? I, I think it's cool, man. I mean it, it is a it is a cult classic. I mean I guess it I guess it kind of depends on a couple of things how how far we are from Elder Scrolls Six. You know, is it that we're that far and they think this is there? Is this just a capital grab thing? I mean, I'm very excited. I don't, I don't know how much I'll play of it because of November, dude. Like you're, you keep forgetting. Like we have a lot coming in that time. Uh, but, but very cool. I mean, I'd love to see that they have the Series X and S upgrades. I'm sure that will add a whole cool dimension to it for sure. Chance, what about you? It reminds me of something that would be on The Simpsons in terms of like <laughs> this company that's just like. This sitting there laughing, just printing money. Like I don't think we can do it again, and then they do it again. <laughs> and they're just like, what can we add? Someone's like fishing. And yeah. <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> Throw that there, in there. Yeah, there's literally people I've seen me like, well, I love to fish in games, and they're going to get it. And it's funny because there was an article that was released not too long ago where Todd Howard was, was like, 
we'll stop giving you so many of these Elder Scrolls V editions if you stop buying it. And yet here, people are going to buy this. Like people, Skyrim is, we forget how massive of a hit it really is. And I, I, I'll check out. I, I don't it forget. It's a, it's a top five all time for sure. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it's incredible. So shout out to Bethesda. And this is also coming to other consoles, which I thought was kind of interesting. They are, and Quake as well. They, this is going to PS5 as well. So there's kind of that legacy on other consoles that Phil Spencer mentioned. So maybe just yeah, but, a new pre- IP moving forward will not be on PS5. Ho- Jose, yeah, but the Quake thing, and I actually just saw this. I was like, I was watching a, a snippet before we jumped on tonight. It's not like the Doom remakes because like the Doom remakes are like full HD. New, I mean, they literally just they cleaned up the sprites and the the, the environments and stuff. But it's the it's very 4K. very no but, yes, but, but I'm saying but it's still like incredibly assets, yeah. blocky graphics and it's. I, I'm not hating on Quake. It, it, it did so much for the franchise. Like I, I totally understand all of that, but it's just it's. I don't know if it's going to be as successful as some of those other reboots because, yeah. like, as much as you think you're going to have a fun time playing it, and yeah, there's those memories. Yeah. Ultimately, you're going to be like, this is kind of boring yeah, kind of compared rough. to what we have today. You know what I mean? For sure, I'd like to check it out eventually down the road when there's time, just because people talk like Quake was one of the main reasons like FPS exists. So I think out of respect, I should check it out. So. Wasn't wasn't Quake why the Unreal Engine was created. Something is it the like original that. one. You might be on something. Yeah, it, it has some of deep heritage. So we'll have to find out on that. If if you have, if anyone out there listening, please let us know more about Quake. Are you Quake fans? I'm looking at you, Jay Biz. Moving on. Next story, guys. This one, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. On August 19th, officially, probably the latest time ever, a new Call of Duty game was announced. Rise on every front. Call of Duty Vanguard is coming out November 5th and it's basically a World War II era game but with a uh, alternate history which I kind of like about it where World War II didn't end and it's showing you in battles on multiple fronts and this a new idea of uniting and, and it being a bigger conflict what were did you guys watch the trailer did any of you guys please tell me you watched it please of course Okay. Jose, what were your thoughts on the Vanguard reveal? Are you excited? Will you be getting it? Or are you just going to stick to Warzone? I mean, I will. If I play it, it'll be Warzone. Um, Because again, it's just, we talked about this last week. I just, I have to start being a little more selective. And um, I will say when I watched the teaser last week that you had sent, I was like, "Mm, you know, cool. And and I I mean, I'm, it's not that I don't like World War II history. Like it's a, a great, great, um, setting for a game i wasn't thrilled i did see the full trailer that came out i think yesterday um where the shows like a bunch of stuff and i will say i bet it's a i bet it's a cool multiplayer they did i I did like the idea that it wasn't just the eastern front or the pacific front it's literally all of the fronts um and like there was one the one scene that i thought was like oh that'd be a pretty cool mission is it was you were clearly skydiving out of a plane at night in the middle of like one of the big firefights and there's just like bullets whizzing by you and planes flying by and missiles and it, it's very clear that's going to be a, a thing that you play in the game and it looks really cool like they i'm sure it will be really fun but it goes back to that question about the multiplayer because it's like same thing like yeah it's it's that context that makes it fun but if it's just the same map and we're just running over hills with like guns with not a lot of attachments and stuff that just that just doesn't appeal to me as much so i hope it does well i hope people really like it i do think it was really pretty i'm sure it'll be great on next gen hardware and stuff like that but um, it's probably not in my immediate queue to play anytime soon. Yeah. What about you, Chance? Any thoughts on Call of Duty Vanguard? I, th- I might be crazy. Didn't we already talk about this? <laughs> All right. I'll give you my thoughts. Here, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, this was yes, formally. No, this is formally announced. We knew nothing. We didn't see what it looked like. We knew nothing about the plot. We knew nothing about the fronts, the alternative historical timeline. Okay, okay, okay. I, I guess... want to say. Let me say this, Chids. I'm a big fan of World War II stuff. Like, love Band of Brothers. Love Saving Private Ryan. I like. I said this. You're right. We did talk about the, the World War II campaign. I'm interested in this, but I have no interest in the multiplayer. I will stick with Warzone. I hope they give a new map. I hope that they completely relaunch it with next gen hardware, not the continuation of the 2019 Warzone Verdansk map. And I was just thinking, 
and this I think kind of ties in with Halo. We'll talk about a little bit later. I wish there was a way I could just buy the campaign. I'm wondering if Call of Duty should start doing this and piecing out their game, saying, hey, you just want to pay the campaign, 25 bucks. Hey, you just want multiplayer and Warzone, 25 bucks or whatever, or 30 and 30 or something. I would do that. I like their campaigns. And usually this is probably one where I'll just wait until it's 20 bucks down the road. Yeah, that's I think what I was going to say. This is a good way. I think they should start to consider this because, yes, there's all with Call of Duty, there's always just people, I only play the multiplayer. I couldn't care less about the campaign or I actually do love the campaigns and I don't play the multiplayer. I think they need to start considering, especially with free to play growing and growing with Halo and various other, you know, Fortnite, Warzone, other modes. They like they need to consider here's the campaign for people who want campaign and here's multiplayer, make it free with the battle passes for the people who want multiplayer. Uh, what do you guys think about that model? I think it's, that's a genius idea. I, I because I keep wanting to play Cold War campaign, but I'm not going to spend seventy dollars on that, and I'm also not going to get the last gen version. I mean, that's a slap in the face to me. And, but and then you know it went on sale for like forty five, I think, for the summer one. But I'm still like, not, I'm still, yeah. I'm like, that should be. That's five dollars more than the max that it should be for just the campaign. So, no, that's a great idea. I hadn't thought of that. Well, and honestly, they kind of—I mean, they didn't do that with the campaign, but that's what they were kind of doing with Cold War and just before that, where like you buy, you can buy the whole game, obviously, and it comes with multiplayer. Warzone's free for everybody, but you could also like you could just buy multiplayer. You know what I'm saying? Like if you liked Warzone and you wanted to play multiplayer maps, you could buy just multiplayer without the game and stuff like that. I mean, it's not that far off. I mean, I just think, I think at their heart, though, that's kind of the bread and butter of their series. Like, yes, they're making a lot from Warzone, and yes, that's really fun. But like at the heart of like storytelling and like that piece of it comes from those. And so that I think it's a great idea. I don't know how quick they'd be to do that to, you don't know. But maybe, I mean, maybe they could, maybe they could do that. The old, the old ones too. Like you buy, you could buy the newest ones, 25, all the old ones are 10. And you can go back and play all these in yeah. like an updated version. It's just the campaign. Not a terrible idea. An example of that already exists, though. They did the Modern Warfare 2. That campaign was remastered, and they released that all by itself. Yeah, yeah that's and a good point. And then Modern Warfare 3, I think they did that, too. And I don't think these had multiplayer. It, the, I know the first one did, but I don't know. I think that's something they should consider. Before we move into the next story, you guys, I just wanted to show you this. I purchased this amazing shirt from the Xbox Gear Shop. Shout out. Look at this merch. Guys, look at this shirt. Do you, do you see what it is? Do you see what it says? What is that, Jose? I can't see what it says, but it's a needler, right? Yeah. It says, I'm a Halo simp. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, Jose. I, dude, this is probably one of the coolest shirts. Hey, guys, if you're on the video or audio podcast, audio listener, please check out the video. We're at about 42 minutes. Guys, go check out this shirt. It is sick. Look, look at that. Dude. Look at that. It actually is a really needler. sick this shirt. This is a All sick jokes shirt, aside, it's guys. pretty cool. It says needler. This is manufacturer. It gives you some stats and stuff. Got this cool little logo, some alien covenant stuff that I don't know what it says. This is a sick shirt. Shout out to the gear shop. This is like my new favorite shirt, by the way. I, Jose, this is like stylish, isn't it? Like this is what those young no, kids are wearing. These you days. could totally wear that to the club. That's what I'm talking about. So moving in perfectly, 46 minutes. Or what are we at now? We're we're gonna talk about Halo guys, and this this is gonna pain me because I've got some beef with Halo today. And speaking of a good thing that we waited for recording because this news broke on a Friday, and that's my biggest concern is like we're gonna miss some Friday news. This 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 saddens me. This is coming from Cloberl again over on Twitter eight hours ago. Halo Infinite August update. A new big team battle and PvP flight is coming, so I'm excited. Hopefully, I get selected for this. I hope you guys signed up on uh, Halo Waypoint, guys, because you got to get in on this. But then here's the heartbreaking news. And the more I think about it, the more I'm conflicted, but I still think it's it sucks. Forge and Campaign Co-op is not coming at the launch of Halo Infinite this winter, whenever the release date is coming. And I think that the release date is going to be announced at Gamescom. Now they can officially go since they have the Call of Duty release date. They have Battlefields, October, Call of Duty's right at the beginning of November. You would think if they're ready, I would do it in September, get this game out early, get everybody playing. 
or uh, what's probably more realistic is they're going to do it in November, celebrate the 20 year anniversary of Halo and the Xbox uh, original Xbox launch, which would mean a more late November launch. And then three months after that, potentially Forge and campaign co-op coming later. So I want to share my thoughts first here. Forge, I was never big into Forge. I know a lot of people love Forge and like to create their own maps. That's not my concern. I am genuinely shocked that Halo is coming out without campaign co-op. And when I think of memories with Halo, a lot of it, almost all of it, is playing the campaigns with my friends. At the same time, though, a majority of what we're going to be playing, guys, is going to be the multiplayer. I don't think it's going to affect us too much, all things considered. And I guess I can wait to play it down the road with my brother or with you. But then I was also thinking everything we've seen from the campaign so far, it's really like zeroing in on the chief being this main hero and it revolving around him and his story with Cortana. And I think they want it to be more of a single player RPG experience, open world. Like we know it's going to be open world. You know, you can go wherever on your map to go to main missions, to go to side missions, explore, and I think that means they want us maybe as players to treat it more like a single player experience. And maybe that's why, in addition to maybe they probably have delays due to COVID and not getting it and having it ready. I also think that just the general design of the game, they want it to play more like a single player. Uh, I, I, like I said, I think I need to think of this more as like a Skyrim campaign versus a, a Halo traditional co-op campaign. Again, I do think Halo, most people are going to play the multiplayer, especially since it's free. Some people don't even play the campaign. Some people don't care. I can't wait to play the story. I guess I'd rather play the campaign sooner than have to wait for it be delayed and play it by myself. I mean, I usually always play them by myself, but I also always play them co-op too. So uh, who wants to go first with this news? No co-op at launch. We're going to have to wait at least three months until co-op comes to Halo Infinite. Uh, you know, I, I'll go first if it, you don't mind chance. Um, I heard that news too just before we started recording and it was actually, they were talking that the news actually came from 343. So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the guy that originally leaked it was the Twitter guy, but they came forward and said, yep, it's, it's, and they, they did site specifically had mostly to do with safety and trying to balance what they could get done before the launch in November. And I'll be honest, we, we've talked about that a little bit in past shows about like, take your time and do it right. And if you have to cut something and you can't move forward, be smart, be thoughtful. Um, you know, if you could delay the game, it's just hard at this point because they've announced it so much. Everyone's so excited. Like, there's just, I don't think they can do that at this point. Um, One thing I just want to add, though, they announced last summer in an article from the head of the studio at the time, I think his name was Chris Lee, saying Halo Infinite's going to launch with campaign co-op. So that's why I can see why a lot of people are going to be mad about this is because they announced this like last year before it got delayed another year. So that makes me mad. But now Joseph Staten's the main guy there and he, he's yeah. everything he's done so far. You're right. They, they've been so transparent. I admire everything that 343 has done. They've announced that they, and it takes, it takes balls to first of all, delay the game a year when it was supposed to launch with the series mm -hmm. X and just and say this stuff. So you're right, Jose 343 is being transparent and I would much rather studios be transparent. So sorry, go ahead. Like, no, I, I was going to say, I mean, the other part of that is that no one could have predicted what COVID would have brought. I mean, besides the disease itself and shutting down, the things like the chip shortages, like shipping issues, like the fact that graphics cards are selling on the black market for like triple prices and stuff like there's no way people could have predicted that. And so as much as it is upsetting, like people got to let that go. Secondarily, I agree with Diwali a little bit that like it is a bummer that we can't on day one do co-op on the campaign. Um, but two things there, you know, to some degree, it could be fun to go back in a couple of months and do like. The, the Spartan mode, like the hardest mode where we've all beaten it. We know the story, but now we're ready to just legendary. Like, Jose. Legendary. legendary. Um, it could be called Spartan mode in this one. You don't know. It's new. Um, <laughs> you know, do that together. I think is really cool. And then the other part is, like I said, we, as much as I love the idea, I love playing with you guys. You know that we just don't have that much time, like between everything else to say, like we're going to get through this whole campaign together. You the know ascent, what I'm saying? That's why I played the ascent by myself. I was like, there's no yeah. way we're going to coordinate this. You're right. 
So I, I'm not I'm not really that upset about it all. I am excited to play the campaign as much as I am in the multiplayer and get really back into the universe. They also mentioned that story when I heard about it that they they really are getting back into the season pass stuff, and that's it's going to be an update in one of the passes down the road. And I think they said three month passes. They I feel like I, that's what I remember. I like, don't quote me on that. Um, but I mean, I like that lots of material. I like that there'll be hopefully some obviously skins and emblems and that kind of stuff. And you know, that is one thing I hope they do keep or bring back is the way you could design your own emblem. I just loved how creative people got, you know what I'm saying? Making kind of their own stuff. I'd love that aspect as stupid as that was. I love that. So those are my thoughts. What about you, Bubba boy? Yeah. And cause Cordy will get to make all his teenage mutant Ninja turtle emblems. Right. And, um, you know, I'm going to be really positive about this one and, and I'm okay with it. And of course I, I wanted to be bummed at first, but the more I think about it, I'm like, I, I can't be too greedy. And it feels like, he, how do I want to say this? Like, if from the very beginning they had said that, I don't think all of us would have been like shattered by the news or super upset by the news. Um, and maybe there's a real, um, um, gosh, what like direct reason for it? Maybe there there is something kind of story related, like you were saying, D Wally. That's like, hey, no, you need to do this the first time by yourself. Um, and or maybe it's just a server issue. And, and if it's it, like and we, it we could choose be. servers for co op or for multiplayer. I would yeah. say multiplayer every time. Yeah, I think I have a choice. Oh yeah, right. And they're like, okay, or we could do both, and people might be getting diced left and right, right? Like, I have to imagine that they are making the right decision when they say this, or I want to imagine that they are. Um, and I'm just going to be grateful for a really good game that we get when we get it. And because I typically go to bed early, I probably would have missed out on all the fun anyway. So. It makes me yeah. feel like a lot less FOMO. So <laughs> Yeah, you're right. And the more I think about it, like it's even hard even these days for me to get Alan and Snelling to play some multiplayer together. So, you know, problems for us old middle-aged guys with families, co-op, you're right, is becoming less and less of an option or harder to get the logistics around that. So but, I guess you're but right. But when it, when it is there, that will be one that I hope to have, you know, that the three of us and we can, well, it'll be four player co-op probably. Not right? sure. Or do they, I, yeah. I like the whole going open world thing. Like I really think that's a part of it. And I, I do think they're trying to make this more single, like you said, focus on the chief. So Hopefully, you're right. I need to be more positive. I'm excited because from what I played a multiplayer, guys, this is going to be a really good game. Like, I can already tell. I'm disappointed, but you guys are making me, you know, take a step back and have some hindsight on us. And, you know, I, I need to be more positive. I'd rather have a great game. And I think they're going to give us that. And hopefully, they'll figure out the co op. So, mostly, I just wanted to play with Pony, but Pony's not going to be able to play anyway. So, we all know why. So let's move on to the final news uh, item this week. And this one I thought was really interesting because I had never really thought about this uh, until I read this on another, um, from another, I don't know, somewhere on Twitter. But basically, here are Xbox's biggest concerns uh, about the platform right now. And I thought this was really good. So we're almost... I think this says six months for, yeah. So we're almost at a year at, at least. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's more than that. We're at eight. We're almost like, we're almost at, we're at like 10 months. So we're almost at the year of when they, the console came out. Basically we're almost into September. Gosh, that's scary. And I wanted to have some a moment here where we can reflect and say, and, and talk about what do you think needs to improve with Xbox as a platform with the console um, some of the ideas in this article, and this is coming from Windows Central, uh, here are Xbox fans' biggest concerns about the platform right now. Uh, number one, Xbox achievement system. I, I'd like to talk about some ideas there. Uh, Xbox backwards compatibility is the next one. This one right here is personal to me. Xbox game DVR streaming and sharing. Guys, I can't get my DVR to work. It is. First of all, I had to do a hard reset. It was recording just a blank black screen. Then it was a green screen. I had to do hard resets. Then it was recording. And then it was working for like one day. Now I try to record something and I press play and nothing happens. So I'm getting sick of the game DVR. And then the next one was uh, localization and global expansion. This really doesn't affect us too much. I don't feel like we have any problems maybe in other parts of the world. 
Um, support for Xbox from Japanese studios. I think they're doing a pretty good job with this. We've got the Yakuza games. We've got a lot of games coming in. So to me, yeah, I wish there were some people wishes there were more JRPGs, but that's not really an issue for me. And then the last one was third-party storage and uh, memory expansion or hard drive expansion. I feel like with the external hard drive for old games i i've managed my series x all right and i think the option i've seen it on sale for the one terabyte expansion card for like 180 i feel like that's reasonable so guys do you have any complaints basically or concerns with your xbox series console or the platform as a whole right now chance i saw you unmuted so why don't you go ahead and share yours first yeah, and I, I won't spend too long because we've talked about it before, but the achievement system, I just feel like it's kind of, it's plateaued and that I really wish that they would push developers to integrate some of the convenience features that they've tried to, to make, that they would say developers like, look, you need to do this um, because it, it just doesn't, they don't, hardly any of them track the way they're supposed to. Um, things like that. I wish the other thing is that it would be a little bit easier or more user friendly interface to do all the sharing of posts and videos and, and, um, yeah, screenshots that, that we take and stuff like, and that's a super first world problem. Like it probably takes me three minutes to take a screenshot and then get it on my phone, download it to my phone and then send it to the nerd chat. But like, I feel like it should just be part of the, um, what do you call it? And, and the app, I should just be able to go to the Xbox app and Hey, here's all my re at least the recent ones, right? Like I wouldn't expect it to have hey. the entire library, especially if there's videos, but Hey chance, at least your diva is working apparently mm -hmm. and you're getting yeah. your screenshots yeah. like in clips. Uh, That's also we agree frustrating. There, there needs to be a 100% like platinum. They need to, they need to match mm -hmm. that. They need to figure mm -hmm. that out. They need to figure out some sort of additional thing saying this person got 100% of the base game. They need to basically copy what PlayStation did and give credit yeah. to what PlayStation. PlayStation evolved on achievements because achievements came first. Now Xbox needs to evolve some more. I like the unique percentage ones with the diamond and the special sound or whatever, but I want that 100% completion. They need to match the Platinums. Yeah. Um, and like I said, guys, my DVR sucks. And it's it's get, starting to get frustrating because there are cool moments where I'm like recording Oh, it, for sure. And yeah. it's not recording. So what good is the DVR to me? So that yeah. really makes me mad. Those are the two biggest ones that I have. Other well, than that, the other actual – let me finish. The actual – console itself and experience it, it's fast it loads i haven't had it crash really like as far as hardware is concerned i feel like it's fantastic so minus this i guess that software the dvr and achievement so as, as far as the console that's been phenomenal i haven't had any issues and chance go ahead and then jose I, there was we had heard a long long time ago um and i think of like dinosaur and um some of the f boys about this that like that you could that you're not completely bypassing achievements if you get fully into one game, right? And so those the F boys play in a ton, a ton of Warzone, and so their achievement score and their gamer score is just never going to skyrocket, right? But they probably sink more hours than you and I put together um, into their gaming Diwali, but it it it's never going to show in that gamer score, which I know is just one tiny little thing, but I would, and I don't know what the, the right answer is, but I've heard they, they've said they were going to try and do something and we've heard nothing. Yeah. But what, like an hourly score? Honestly, we'd all be no, depressed. Just, we'd be like, Oh God, <laughs> just a way to differentiate. Yeah. Like this person really put in the effort to the, the multiplayer online. And this person, again, just do sep a, a, a campaign list and a multiplayer list and have them separate and release them separately. Like I mentioned earlier, Jose, what are your thoughts or concerns uh, with your series X so far and Xbox as a whole? I mean, honestly, when, when you sent this in the, in the notes for this week, I'll be the optimist here. I was like blown away happy. I was like, are you kidding me? You open up the whole internet to what you hate about your Xbox and not one person mentioned the games because that's what the console is there for. It is for the games and that experience. And everyone was like, no, that great part point. is great. I have zero complaints, which I, I thought was incredible. Um, I mean, you, we've already talked about the achievement thing for me. It, it's, it's not that big a deal for me personally. I know it is for you guys and I want it fixed for you guys. Genuinely. I do because I know it matters for you guys. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's hopefully some debugging stuff. And I'm sure some of that stems from the fact that they're doing backwards compatibility. Plus we're still in this weird, like middle ground between, 
last gen new gen stuff and, and i'm hoping they'll figure that out over time um you know the only one on here that was even kind of where i was like yeah that i worried a little bit about that is the ssd thing um because the proprietary systems man i just wish there was a better way and I, I don't even mind paying for the ssd i don't mind that it's 180 bucks or even full price like when i need it i'll pay for that when i need it there but I just like the idea of like, can we do something with like USB-C or Thunderbolt or 3.0 or just something where like there's just more options than that one card? Because right now it's, yeah, it's fine. And honestly, I think I like the Xbox system where you can delete the game. It saves obviously all your data and, you know, you could you don't have to eat up your hard drive. But it would be nice as games are going to continue to evolve. They're going to continue to get bigger, you know, like that that, that was kind of pre-built in. You know, other than that, I'm okay. And And the DVR thing, like, yeah. I don't use that personally a whole lot, so it doesn't affect me. So I couldn't even tell you if mine works or not because I, I really rarely ever say that or share stuff. I always appreciate when you guys send it to me, but I just don't do that. Um, you know, I do hope, I, you know, I, I guess my struggle there is like people that do this professionally, like I'm not saying that we're not professional, but like they have capture cards. That's like literally what they do because it's, they, don't, they can't rely on the fail safe of that, of any system, even PC. And so, you know, I, I hope they fix it. It would be a cool bonus. But again, overall, the fact that when you opened up to the internet up to, and said, I want you to complain to us and no one mentioned the games, I think that's a pretty cool win. So, no, that, you're, I, I want to know what percentage point. of fans wrote in and said, bring back Connect. Uh, it was Xbox like those dance this. dance people. They just, there's like <laughs> six of them. Jose, that's a really good point. And that's a fantastic thing. Well, you're right. I didn't even think about it. We have had nothing but great games for this first year and it's been fun. And it's going to continue. So, great point. As far as the expansion thing, I was thinking about this. I'm surprised you actually have a problem with it, Jose, because this goes more proprietary. This is like an Apple move where it's closed off and they're only offering one way to do it. And I thought you'd like that. It's simple. It does work. I know you've probably seen how you upgrade the PS5. It's like a big hat. Well, not a big hassle, but it, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to be selective. You have to get a certain speed. You have to have a heat sink. You have to make sure it's going to fit. You have to remove it. Like... It's kind of annoying. Whereas Xbox, you buy it and plug it in, you know. And you're it's right, but here's work. the here's the difference because I agree with you, and and I I actually do. You're right. Usually, I like the the built in system. I like and I like that the card is super simple. It works. It's guaranteed. It's fast. I mean, because that's the piece, and the fast piece is what you need so you can run games off the card. That's that's the biggest like choke point of the system. the The difference with Apple is that usually you get to choose your size. Right. So like, yes, it is locked in, but I could, I could start with two terabytes versus like five twelve or something like that. And you couldn't on Xbox. You, everybody got the same. Okay. You know well, maybe saying? they're going to add a two terabyte, but I, I thought you'd be a bigger fan of that, but you're right. Achievements. Most people probably don't care. DVR. I disagree with you a little bit. And like, yes, I have a capture card, but I don't want to have to hook up my laptop to record stuff every time. It should be simple and it should work because it works on, on PlayStation. It works on the switch. It needs to work for casual It works on Apple. On the Xbox, whatever. Oh, great. Anyway, all right. Enough about that. Let's move on, you guys, to the good old days. Everybody's favorite segment. Jose, take it away. What would you like to discuss this week for the good old days? Yeah, so we, a couple weeks ago, just between the three of us, we were talking about the best eras of gaming in regards to the physical media that games come on. Uh, and and ultimately, we all basically agree that this is the best era, the the digital era where you can download games directly to device um, for lots of reasons. Obviously, you can get great deals. You can store lots of them. There's just you get to share what you love. So it, ultimately, we decided we're going to leave that out as one of the choices today. But then that really left two eras, the cartridge era. So the, the, the era where all games came on cartridges, NES, SNES, Sega, even Nintendo 64, uh, and versus the disc era, right? So like the PlayStation, Xbox, you know, which people thought was better and why. And it could be for any reason. I just, you know, we we all have um, stories and memories in both of those eras. And so I, my vote is for cartridge. That is, I think that is the best era. Do either of you want to choose disc and we can, we can have a little discourse? I, I just want to jump in here and say that neither of these are the right answer. You were right. The digital era is the best answer and screw discs, screw cartridges, Nintendo. Um, funny story though. I bought red dead at Walmart, the other physical game that I have, I purchased two this week. Shocking. I know you guys, I purchased cyberpunk cause it was $10 and I got a cool steel book for it. And that comes with the free upgrade for series X whenever they release that. 
And then I purchased Red Dead. It was $20 at Walmart for the Game of the Year edition, which is less than what I would have paid for all of it online. The I, I installed it to my Series X, and I was like, oh, I'll just install this on my uh, Series S upstairs. And I was like, oh, that's a digital it's only digital system. Only. Yep. <laughs> so that kind of stuff. I was like, I can't play this on that. So that was a problem I ran into. I will agree with Jose. Cartridges is the best. I can. I don't think I ever had a problem with cartridges, especially you just go... Just blow on the di- on the cartridge. Worked every time. Never had an issue. CDs. Somebody would scratch it, or it would get scratched in the case somehow, and then you'd be in trouble. So get them out of here. I still don't know. Uh, Askins had to have sent his Xbox back because the disc drive didn't work because he can't download games because he doesn't have internet out there in the in the boonies in the mountains. Chance, are you going to tell us that CD is the best, or are you no. agree? No, I can remember. Um borrowing Chapo's copy of Final Fantasy VII one point and playing it so much that I'm sure it 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 was kept in immaculate condition, but we played it so much that I'm sure that's where all the scratches came from it, and we had to take it into like an EB Games and have them get it cleaned. And I can I can just remember like oh, is this gonna work? Is this gonna work? And it did, right? Like that was really cool, but. Um, no cartridges. Yeah. The blowing that was, that was such a classic move. And I, I've always wanted that t-shirt that just has the old NES game. It says blow me on it, but I'd never wear it cause my wife wouldn't let me, but, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I'm well, this was not Allie about that joke. <laughs> what? This is going to be a slower uh, segment than I was anticipating. I thought one of you was going to choose discs for sure. I no. really thought it was going to be Chance because he was a big PlayStation Two guy, yeah, like big, big PlayStation Two guy. guy. Well, yeah, but in that, like, that's where I was struggling with the topic, and it I, struggling from the standpoint that, like, I think it was obvious what we were all going to choose. But it, then, if if we want to just talk like what console era was better, I don't know. It was it was, yeah, I don't no. know. Here's the thing: cartridges win. Because you can, I have a Super Nintendo. Well, Miso Pony stole it from me, and he thinks it's his, but it's not yours, Pony. It's mine, and all those games are mine. I could still plug that into a TV just with a converter for the, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it uses, mm-hmm. and it'll still work, which is incredible. Yeah. I don't know if the PlayStation ones, the PlayStation twos, if you could still do that. Maybe if you kept it in great shape, but. As far as I'm concerned, cartridges, like, I don't know, I guess I started out with a Super Nintendo and I'm just, it's always going to be a special place in my heart. But I did think it was super cool when PlayStation had those discs and I was like, I felt like it was the future, you know, I was like, look at the, they had had those dark black, the black, that's what I was going to say, the copywriting. I did when when I made the switch to PS1 after my Super Nintendo, I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And then Nintendo 64 stuck with cartridges. I'm like, that's lame, man. What are you thinking, dude? This is so much more powerful. So shout out to the PS1 and those dark black discs. I think they continue that with PlayStation 2 as well, but the problem now is, guys, the, is like no matter what, even if you get a disc, it's just telling you, hey, go download this giant file off the internet. I know. I know. So, yeah. And most of yeah, them yeah. don't even fit on the – like Cyberpunk uh, – look, this is two Blu-ray discs. Who wants yeah. to do – this is stupid. Jose, do you have a physical for this? Yeah, it's it's over there. It's by, in, in my, my TV. <laughs> still shrink wrap too. Like this. I know. I actually know it is because I didn't want to lose the stickers, so it's still shrink wrap till I open it. <laughs> go ahead, Jose. Last, well, last thoughts on the good old days here. No, as you can say, so because initially, obviously, the same thing, like cleaning the cartridges was a lot more satisfying. I thought it was more satisfying, like inserting the cartridge versus a disc, like you do the like, bam, you're ready to play, that kind of thing. Um, but a couple other points, I, you know, it sounds silly. I always thought the box art and the manuals were much better in the cartridge era than the the, the disc era. Like the box art was just so satisfying to go to like Toys R Us and like you pulled the little slip right and then you paid for it. Then they hand you like the physical box. That sounds so stupid, but like I remember that versus like it just felt like I bought another Third Eye Blind CD from Target when I was buying a game, uh, which was which was fine, but not as satisfying. Um, and then the other part that it's, wait, wait, I was not, thinking not about you got more. Final Fantasy VII where you had four discs in there. You know, it was three like, discs. Oh, it was three whatever. discs. Whatever you know what I mean. Um, is I, they were colored cartridges. Do you remember that whole thing? Like you could like like in any it was a gold, the gold Zelda, yeah. And um, Blitz was like a yellow cartridge for sixty four, and there was like a there were black ones. It's I mean I like that you could do that kind of stuff. And even yes, I know the PlayStation discs were black on the bottom, but you never saw that because you were like, don't look at that. You're going to scratch it just by looking at it. 
Um, and the other part that kind of came up, I was talking to um, a coworker, think about using codes versus memory cards, right? Because PlayStation 1, even the PlayStation 1, they had the first memory cards where you could like save your game. That just almost wasn't possible on NES, SNES, or even 64. Maybe some 64 games had it because they had finally enough memory. But other than that, you were just using the codes. Like that was a, you are like homemade cheat sheets where you had to remember the exact placement of like Jafar's head versus Aladdin's head. So you got to the right level. Um, and then of course, just the games. I mean, we don't talk about this yet. Maybe it's a segment for the future. I don't just, I don't know how to phrase it, but like the amount of games that came out of the cartridge era that are still alive in some iteration today is astounding, right? Like the creativity that came from those games. And I know that, I know that Daniel, SNES the Daniel, SNES is go. SNES is the go. I mean, I'm just, it's pretty cool. So anyway, th those were just some of my thoughts. I really thought one of you was going to choose discs. So we just all agreed with each other, but you know, if you disagree with us, write us in, let us know what you think and we'll talk about it and that kind of stuff. So, well, no debate, uh, digital and, uh, screw those discs. It's, it's over cartridges win. I mean, look at the switch. They have, they're still doing the, the stupid, well, that's because then they could just charge the game at $60 and never discount it. And if they do, it's like 45 great savings, yep. Nintendo. Thank you, <laughs> Jose, there for the good old days. If you'd like to submit an idea for the good old days, you can always reach us at Xbox Record This, or sorry, or Xbox Record This at gmail.com or follow us at Xbox Record This. Gentlemen, you know what time it is. Our favorite part of the show. See you online. <laughs> the best food we had this oh, yeah, week. No, Damn it. Who wants to go first? Uh, since Monday? Yeah. Chance, yeah. you can go first. Why don't you go first? Since <laughs> sure. Yes. I'll go. Um, and I can only say this because my wife's asleep and she doesn't listen to this show. Um, but I treated myself and stopped for McDonald's breakfast the other day. Ooh, boy. Um, right, let's, hear, is, let's hear the picks. It's really hard, really hard to beat the sausage McMuffin. Like, just such a class. Stop, stop. What What are you? What else is there? Go ahead. Uh, tell me. The sausage McGriddle. Exactly. The, the McGriddle. Okay. You get the yeah, McGriddle. That, the bacon or sausage okay. McGriddle. Amazing. So, so hold on, though. Who the sweetness of that amazing No, because I'm, boyc I'm boycotting that until they come back with the triple stack. They need, yeah. Oh, how dare both of you give me that look? You don't even is. know what the triple stack is. The triple the stack is the McGriddle, but it goes um, sausage, bacon, sausage, and cheese in between. It's in the yeah. Every too time much. I've too much. It's not too. It's not you too much. Get one sausage and you get one bacon McGriddle. Jesus. Boom, you're done. But and then large caramel iced coffee hash brown. It's like it's like this that you get all that for the same price as like a miniature at Starbucks. So that's pretty awesome. Was um, the hash brown hot? Because that's course clutch. It was. Oh my god! Yeah, I I mean it was when I was on my way to school, so I was like the only one in line. But um, it was so early. They did have, and I was just like, I just I couldn't. I don't know why. I was like, oh my god! And I even knew we were doing this chicken sandwich thing. Um, I was like, they have the spicy breakfast chicken on a McGriddle now. And I, yeah, I know. I was like, I will be getting that next time. So I'm disappointed you didn't get it this time. Jose, I'd I like don't to know go what next. it was. I, it, it, I don't know why. You get both. It, it, had, it was 4 Why is it so hard for you to get two yet. things? You, that's what I do all the time. You get two <laughs> things. Don't yeah, he just think... gets two Popeye chicken exactly. sandwiches pre-workout. Daniel, exactly. your body is twice the size of mine, so like, <laughs> chance. They, but would, for real, they would just find chance wait. passed out in his office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for real though, chance. When you go to Popeyes, when you find McDonald's to Mecca, <laughs> you need to get both the traditional chicken sandwich, their normal one, and the spicy. Promise me that, Jose. I'm going to go next here. The best food I had this week, and I got to give a huge shout out here because I had a great week, you guys. A huge shout out to all the chicken sandwiches I had for research. I had Popeyes. I had two. And then I had the Burger King the next day. And then I had KFC all within a span of three days. Incredible. Delicious. Love them all. You know which one is number one. And then tonight, in addition to having my KFC earlier today, the Costco cheese pizza. Oh my gosh, Jose. You got me hooked You're on welcome. that. You're welcome. So dude. good. Ten bucks. It's got like 4,300 calories. I, I looked it up online. It's 4,300 calories, 4,340 for the entire thing. Per slice, right? No. So per slice, it's around 360, 370, in case you're wondering. I had to do the math for my 
uh, intake there. So shout out to Costco, shout out to the chicken sandwiches. Jose, tell us the best food you had this week. So we, uh, just tonight, we also had pizza here at the Martinez household. We, uh, it was the end of a long week. My wife was at an FAC and I, I was like, can I just order pizza and order jungle cruise? Cause Penelope has been wanting to see that on Disney and, Honestly, so far, we haven't got, we we're only like halfway through. It's pretty good. I really, I've laughed a lot. Like there's a lot of dad jokes in it. Actually, if you like dad jokes, it's a great movie for that. Um, but that, that was really good. It's not my top food this week, but shout out to Pizza Hut because no one out pizzas the hut. We'll talk about that next week. And uh, my, my best food this week was actually from a local restaurant here in Lakewood called Jaime's. Uh, it's off of like Warren and Sheridan. So if you remember where like Notre Dame um, Catholic school's at, or like there's a, there's a Taco Bell there. There used to be a ghetto target over there. There, I think there's a Vasa fitness now behind it um, is a, is a small Mexican restaurant that everyone around here knows it's called Jaime's. Um, and if you ever go there on a weeknight weekday, it's packed. Um, but I got the Mexican hamburger, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a hamburger patty in the tortilla with green chili and cheese and lettuce on top. And you eat it with like a fork and knife. And man, it was, my wife actually got it for me when I was at that thing last night. And so I, I obviously didn't get home till 1030. I was like, I went straight to bed, but I had it today for lunch and even reheated. It was clutch. It like made my day. So if anything that good, that was my best food this week. And if you've never, if you're in Southwest Denver and you're Lakewood, check out Jaime's Mexican restaurant. Totally worth your time. I was like, I'm going to need you to send me a pin, drop a pin for me. I'm going to send it right now before I forget. And, and make sure and tell me, I got to try this. What is it? Mexican hamburger, you said? Did oh, you, shout out to you, Victoria. Shout out to Victoria. Go did ahead. you ever make it Mexican over to, to Tacos, Ra- uh, Tacos Rapidos? No, Tacos Rapidos. I know. I still need to go there. Uh, Jose, you'll be proud of me. I've been practicing my Spanish because I, I call families a lot. And I go on the good old Google Translate. And I've been trying to speak more as I'm trying to talk to them. So a uh, shout out to Google I'm Translate. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> I'm terrible. Tacos Rapidos. So, guys, this has been Xbox Record This, episode 16. Thank you so much for listening. I had a great time. I'm so happy. We officially changed the the uh, the tagline or the description of the podcast. Xbox Record This is a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days because – Big parts of our life. Jose, what were you going to yep. say? <laughs> Nothing. I just want to say that was the best change we made in a while. It's, it's, <laughs> I need to, I'll have to update that for this podcast. It's a t- so. I guarantee you it's all of our fans' number one topic. They love us <laughs> here and talk about food. It's true. Who doesn't love food? And you know, it should be a topic. You listen to a podcast dedicated to food, Jose. You're right. So that's why when we when we start getting marketing, we'll be able to be like, (laughs) see, we knew this was gonna happen. That's why we put it at the end. So that you can get all your advertisements in first. Yeah. For the food segment. Come on, people. So And I think maybe Tacos Rapidos would be the number first one. Or they just pay us in food. Literally, (laughs) they just like what did you get another Uber Eats delivery? No, babe, they're just sending them. Like that's just that's how we get paid now. (laughs) Guys, uh, my name is Daddy Diwali. You can find me at Daddy Diwali across all social media. Uh, Chipotle Bear, are you up to anything or where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Chipotle underscore Bear, or Instagram at Chipotle Bear. And uh, this weekend, no, I got to cut my grass tomorrow and uh, get some stuff ready, rest a little bit. It's been a long week. And then uh, we are a big fam of Halloween in this household. So we're already, I got some plans in the works for this year's Halloween season. So I'm going to start getting some of that rolling with the kiddos. But other than that, man, you know, just enjoying life and uh, looking forward to our new recording schedule. Nice. Me too. Also, shout out to Grayson and Halloween. He picked out his his uh, costume. Does anyone want to take a guess on what it was? I got it from Costco, Jose. So you have the advantage. And then secondly, I did want to say, or no, go ahead. Guess what? Oh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to Chuck E. Cheese's I'm, tomorrow. I haven't been in forever, and it's Grayson's last T-ball game. He couldn't be more excited. Not a big Chuck fan. Chuck E. Cheese or baseball? Baseball. Baseball. <laughs> Not a big fan. I'm so proud of him for getting through it because I'm not going to lie. It's pretty brutal to watch, so oh, yeah. I don't recommend that. <laughs> Jose, yeah. do you want to take a guess at what he chose to be for Halloween this year? Chance after. I'm going to go I'm gonna go superhero. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to go... Damn. I'm going to go Spider-Man. <laughs> Good guess. Chance, what was yours? Were you going to say Master well, Chief? Because I wanted him to get the Master Chief. Out. No, I was going to say Kristoff because you said last week how he always – Frozen That's was frozen. up there. That's a good um, guess. But so it is superhero. It is a superhero. It's <laughs> not Spider-Man. It must You didn't say it wasn't. wasn't. He said, said it was a good yeah, guess. Yeah, I said good guess. I'm not going to really be able to – He's letting you guess first. Yes, exactly. Out of sympathy. Uh, Thor. 
Incorrect, both of you. Batman. I'm going to give Chipotle oh, Bear. Oh, that was my other guess. That was my other the closest. It. He loves to make me, he always tells daddy to be the Joker and chase him. And I've got a great Joker laugh and Joker impression. So, yeah. Well, let's hear it. Well, let's hear it. Did I ever tell you? You came oh, on the Christopher Nolan joke. Yeah, he freaks out. I go, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then great. I bring in the, the Joaquin Phoenix in there for the laugh. Terrifies them. And then Brookie, my daughter, she's always like, I'm the Joker. And then I run in because I'm terrified. She scares me so much. She goes, I'm not kidding. She's like, I'm the Joker now. Freaking me out. She is a stone cold killer, just like her wife. And then Maddie's just so happy and just a really good lover. So <laughs> nothing but love from, from Maddie. So yes, Brookie, terrifying. And they both like to make me be the Joker and chase him. And then Brooke chases me. Chance. Where can people find you? I what don't you remember. I don't. <laughs> you can try to find I'm Bubble Boy N Seven across. He's somewhere out there. So, thank you guys for listening, watching. Appreciate it. This has been Xbox Record. This episode sixteen. And as always, gentlemen, see you online. See you online. See you online. Xbox Record. This is a podcast created by Daniel Walensic. You can follow him at Daddy Diwali on all social media. The assistant to the co-host is Jose Martinez, and you can follow him at Chipotle underscore bear on Twitter. The assistant to the assistant to the co-host is Chance Siegel, and you can follow him at BubbleBoyN7. You can follow the show at Xbox Record This on all social media. If you'd like to find out more about the show, visit XboxRecordThis.com.